Hi, I'm here with Dottie, and we're going to read chapter one in Who Was George Washington Carver? Chapter one, Orphaned. George Washington Carver was born into slavery in Diamond Grove, Missouri, near the end of the Civil War, American Civil War, which was fought from 1861 to 1865. George was black. His owners, Moses and Susan Carver, were white. Moses and Susan were George German immigrants. They didn't like slavery, but they had a 240 acre farm that needed much work. And Missouri had entered the union in 1820 as a slave state. In 1855, the Carvers purchased a 13 year old slave girl named Mary. They treated Mary very well and were happy for her when she gave birth to a son named Jim in 1859. Several years later, George was born. No one knows exactly when George was born because most records among slave owners were poorly kept. Most likely George was born in 1864. His father Giles was a slave who who was owned by a neighbor of the Carvers. He was killed in a farming accident not long after George's birth. No one knows exactly how many brothers or sisters George had. George lived with Mary and Jim in a small cabin on the Carver farm. The cabin was the original house of the farm. Moses and Susan had since built a larger home house and they lived in that one. One night when George was still an infant, he was asleep in the cabin. Suddenly, there was the sound of men on horseback. Moses knew what that meant. Twice before, his farm had been attacked by raiders called bushwhackers, who were fighting on the Confederate southern side of the Civil War. Missouri's role in the Civil War was complicated. Even though Missouri was a slave state, many of the people who lived there were against slavery. So some men of the Union, northern side, fought for Missouri to remain as one of the United States and to free the slave. But some of Missouri's men fought to create a separate nation that would keep slavery legal. Those were on the Confederate side. So we had the Union side and the Confederate side. Union wanted freedom and the Confederates wanted slavery. I'll show you the picture. Moses was caught in the middle. He had slaves, but since he, since he also wanted slavery to be illegal, he upset people on both sides. The bushwhackers wanted to take the slaves and sell them in a nearby state such as Arkansas. Moses raced to the cabin and called out for Mary. Moses grabbed Jim and Mary grabbed George. Moses and Jim escaped, but it was too late for Mary and George. The men grabbed her and her baby and they galloped away in the night. The next day, Moses hurried to Nisho, Missouri. I believe that's how you say that, which was about eight miles away. There was a man in Nisho who was a scout for the Union side. The man might know where to look for Mary and George. Several days later, the scout came back. He was clutching George, who was very sick with whooping cough, but alive. There was no sign of Mary. The raiders had abandoned George. 
Mary was never heard from again. Jim and George were left without a father or a mother, but Moses and Susan were determined to give the boys a family. The Carvers moved Jim and George into the main house and treated them as if they were their own children. Even though the 13th Amendment freed all slaves in 1865, the boys stayed with the Carvers, whom they called Uncle Moses and Aunt Susan. George was known simply as Carver's George. Now we're going to have a little bleep of a little blurp of history. The end of slavery. President Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was a big movement in U.S. history. The proclamation was issued in on January first, eighteen sixty-three. It declared that the slaves in the 10 states fighting on the Confederate Southern side of in the Civil War were free. Technically, the Emancipation Proclamation had little effect. The Confederate states had tried to leave the Union and weren't about to honor anything Lincoln said, but it was very important because it was made clear that the Civil War wasn't just about saving the Union, but also about ending slavery. When the Union Northern side won the war, slavery was over everywhere in the United States. It became official when the 13th Amendment in the U.S. Constitution took effect on December 6th, 1865. Good job, Abraham Lincoln.